This morning, Derek Chauvin faces court. The man accused of killing George Floyd and sparking global protests appears before a judge for the first time. Prince Andrew hits back. The Duke of York's lawyers reject accusations he hasn't cooperated with US authorities. And Josh Reynolds' disastrous year. The NRL star fails a roadside drug test. But the West Tigers veteran claims it's all a misunderstanding. This is 7 News with Natalie Barr. Good morning. Two weeks after African-American man George Floyd died while being restrained by police, the man charged with his murder has faced court. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin appeared via video link from a Minneapolis jail. Chauvin was filmed pressing his knee into Mr Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes. He's facing charges of second-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter and faces up to 40 years in jail. Unconditional bail has been set at 1.25 million US dollars. Chauvin and three other officers also face charges. Will appear in court together at the end of the month. Many across the United States continue to protest and in some parts cities are implementing change, even stripping police forces of funding. But among the peaceful movement there were flashpoints, including a frightening confrontation captured by bystanders. In Seattle, oh God, oh God. a driver takes oh aim, stopping just short of a large protest, then this. Oh oh Jesus. A pop and a man falls back, shot. His attacker oh, there's a gun. gets out, brandishing a pistol and eager to make a quick getaway. But he doesn't get far. Minutes later, he's seen walking up to a line of police, arrested and taken away. His victim given urgent first aid as well as praise. <laughs> Walking and still bleeding, he describes what happened. I catch him, I push him in the face. I hear the gunshot go off in my arm. I moved right in time when he reached for something. I moved right. But my whole thing was to protect those people. America, a country still on edge and demanding sweeping change. Minneapolis voting to start with its police department, tearing it down and starting again. To end policing as we know it. In New York, home to the country's biggest police force. We are committed to shifting resources. Mayor Bill de Blasio defunding the NYPD. Essentially taking money out of the budget for policing and redirecting it to community programs and social services. Local action, but a presidential election is now just five months away. And I certainly cannot in any way support President Trump. Colin Powell, a Republican, and George W. Bush's Secretary of State endorsing Democrat Joe Biden. He lies. He lies about things. And he gets away with it because people will not hold him accountable. While Donald Trump has contacted George Floyd's family via phone, tomorrow his political adversary will travel to Houston to meet them. Joe Biden will also record a video message to be played at the funeral the next day. More days of raw emotion ahead and hope that better days are coming. We have to vote. We have to make our congressional leaders understand that this is unacceptable. In Washington, D.C., Amelia Brace, 7 News. Prince Andrew has hit out at U.S. investigators who formally requested to interview him as part of their investigation into convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Prince Andrew's legal team has called the development disappointing and claimed the Duke of York had previously offered to assist them on three occasions. The Prince's lawyers said they were assured the discussions and the interview process would remain confidential. Federal investigators say they've been trying for months to speak to Prince Andrew, a long-time friend of Epstein's. Back home now and a desperate search is underway for a teenage boy who has autism and is missing in Victorian bushland. 
14-year-old William Callahan was last seen around 2.30 yesterday afternoon after he became separated from his family at Mount Disappointment, triggering an air and ground search. Police say they are extremely concerned for William, who is non-verbal and doesn't have any food or water. The temperature on the mountain dropped to minus one degree overnight. Tear gas and batons have been used to break up two separate fights between inmates at Sydney's Long Bay Jail. The unrest started around midday when prison officers responded to a brawl in the exercise yard. Tear gas was used to control inmates that sent nearby residents fleeing their homes to escape the toxic fumes that wafted into the streets. My son started to scream saying that he couldn't swallow and his eyes were burning. One prisoner was rushed to hospital after being bitten by a prison dog. Other inmates used the chaos to spell out the acronym for Black Lives Matter. Embattled NRL star Josh Reynolds claims a false positive is the reason he failed a roadside drug test yesterday. The 31-year-old was pulled over in Sydney South in the early hours of the morning when it was discovered his licence was expired. Police then tested him for drugs and alcohol. Reynolds explained on social media, the roadside drug test was a false positive. I went to the police station and undertook the further sample for the higher level testing which proved negative. The NRL Integrity Unit is working with his club, the West Tigers, and the New South Wales Police to determine what happened. The federal government will end its temporary free childcare program on July 12 with fees to return the following day. Political reporter Olivia Leeming is in Canberra. The government says demand for the service is now almost at pre-pandemic levels. Yeah, now, now filling about three quarters of the available places as the economy reopens, more parents return to work. Enough, the government says, for it to end its emergency free childcare program. The old subsidy scheme will return for parents from the 13th of July, but there will be extra support for those families who've lost income during the crisis. The relax activity the test will be relaxed, so it's easier to access subsidies up to 100 hours a fortnight. Fees will be capped at the level that we saw back in February. The government's also announced it's ending job keeper payments for childcare workers from the 20th of July, but there'll be about $700 million for in support uh, until September. Though Labor, the Greens and key parents groups warn that this will force thousands of parents to remove their children from childcare because they won't be able to afford it, raising concerns about whether enough will be able to return to work. Though today, the government focusing on extra relief for small businesses the Treasurer will announce the $150,000 instant asset write-off will be extended for another six months until the end of the year, hoping it will help stimulate the economy with more than 3.5 million businesses that will be eligible for that extra support. Nat? OK, thanks, Olivia. A man's been charged with threatening to kill New South Wales Police Minister David Elliott. The 25-year-old allegedly made the threat on Facebook. Police then searched his home in Lake Macquarie, finding cannabis, medication without a prescription, two gel blasters and ammunition. He was granted bail to appear in court next month. A woman has been burnt in an explosion outside her home in Sydney southwest overnight. The 55-year-old was inside her Canterbury property when she heard a number of loud bangs coming from outside. Police say she then went to investigate an aerosol can exploded. She was taken to hospital with burns to her hands and her legs. It's unclear what caused the blast. Authorities will this morning decide whether to reopen 25 kilometres of coast after a great white shark killed a surfer off northern New South Wales. Despite heroic efforts to save him, 60-year-old Rob Pedretti lost his life on the beach. His mates want him remembered as a man of the ocean. He was a lovely guy. Everyone loved him. He was everyone's mate. Loved surfing, loved life. And he was starting to enjoy life in retirement. But uh, we're going to miss him. At his favourite break in Tugan, those closest to Rob Pedretti mourn their mate. Great heart, so gentle, you know, just one of the gentle souls.
The 60-year-old from Victoria called the Gold Coast home for 40 years. He was a tiler, just retired, boasting a black belt in Taekwondo and stories of chasing waves all over the world. Just a cool guy, he's just one of the boys, you know, he was, he, was a, he was a gentle giant. Rob's last surf was at Salt Beach near Kingscliff, a three metre great white attacked, severing an artery in his left thigh. Rob's mate Frank rendered aid as the shark circled. He's struggling as expected, but he's a, he's a hero in all the story. The other hero, stranger Mark Hayes. Frank believes that if Mark wasn't there, it was just him and Robbo, that, that shark, Frank probably wouldn't be here either. On the beach where Rob died, there's a growing memorial. The water now off limits between the border and Pottsville, where there are no drum lines. But the whereabouts of the Great White remains unknown and the order to kill it has been revoked. Because it isn't tagged, authorities won't know for sure they've got the right one. Do you think Robbo would want it to be killed? No. No. Not at all. Not at all. He'd be angry with it though. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of drivers are taking huge risks at level crossings with cameras catching them dicing with death. These pictures from Victoria are revealing what really happens when vehicles are hit by trains. School students are in the wrong too, seen here walking over tracks, one boy needing to be helped up with only seconds to spare. Checking Tuesday's weather now, late shower for Brisbane, a top of 23 for you, Sydney 18 and a possible shower today, Canberra 13 and mostly sunny, a foggy start in Melbourne, then sunny and a top of 15, Hobart 14 and mostly sunny, Adelaide frost, then sunny, a top of 14, Perth 25 today, mostly sunny and a mostly sunny day for Darwin and 33 degrees. Coming up on 7 Early News, a check of finance plus stop right now. Victoria Beckham's battle with an Aussie skincare company and new evidence that may surprise parents why one expert says we shouldn't limit kids' screen time. That's next. Thousands of people who participated in Black Lives Matter protests across Australia over the weekend have been urged to go into self-isolation for 14 days. Australian Medical Association President Dr Tony Bartoni says just one infected protester from the rallies could spark a significant coronavirus outbreak. London's mayor has slammed violence at anti-racism protests, which resulted in 49 injured police officers as unacceptable. Thousands of people took to the streets over the weekend in a show of solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, of course I'm worried uh, when any police officer is uh, injured and it's unacceptable and I'm angry that 49 police officers uh, were injured. The mayor says he shares the pain and the anger of protesters. A huge fire has broken out at a construction site in the United States. The four-storey apartment building went up in flames overnight in Phoenix, Arizona. The complex was almost half finished when the fire broke out. Exposed wood framing quickly caught alight. Trucks, tractors and forklifts also caught fire, causing several explosions. It took 200 firefighters several hours to bring the blaze under control. New Zealand is officially free of coronavirus with no active cases. The nation had some of the strictest lockdown measures in the world. All of those rules were lifted at midnight, but New Zealand's borders will remain closed for now. Checking finance, the Dow Jones is trading more than 300 points higher. The Nasdaq is also in the green. In London, the FT100 fell. Germany's DAX closed slightly lower. Japan's Nikkei closed higher. Hong Kong's Hang Seng also up. But the ASX was closed due to yesterday's public holiday. Commodities, gold is trading at 1705 US dollars an ounce. Oil, 38 US dollars a barrel. Uh, the Aussie dollar buying 70 US cents today, 76 Japanese yen and a dollar six New Zealand. Former Spice Girl Victoria Beckham has ended her trademark battle with Sydney's company VB Skin Lab, which had tried to register two logos using the initials VB. The now British fashion designer had objected, but both sides have now agreed to settle the case. A federal court judge has ruled the trademark applications can proceed. 
The pandemic has forced many of us to spend much more time indoors with children using computers, tablets and TVs more than ever. But some experts say instead of feeling guilty, parents should focus on how children can benefit from technology. Like many parents during COVID-19, mother of two, Elise Bone, has seen changes in her children's habits. The big one, they're spending more time in front of screens. They need to get through it as well and if it means having some more quiet time and learning or just watching screens, well... That's what you've got to do. According to the Bureau of Statistics, 58% of us are using devices more during the pandemic. But some experts say when it comes to kids, extra time isn't all bad. One of the things we've learnt from this COVID isolation is just how positive technology can be in a child's life. Dr Joanne Orlando says we should shift our focus from screen time to screen quality. So are they doing something educational, problem solving, using their imagination, being creative? You know, we want to aim for that kind of content. Children should also use it as a time to connect with others. So will you come and see Nana? Sometimes by themselves, sometimes with people online and sometimes with people right next to them. That's the mix that you want to aim for as a parent. While experts say we shouldn't be too obsessed with screen time, that doesn't mean kids should be on their devices all day long. What we do know is that when kids spend more time inside and looking at things up close, they do have an increased risk of developing short-sightedness. The advice, balance that screen time with some green time. Elise Baker, 7 News. Next on 7 Early News, the West Coast Eagles touch down on the Gold Coast where they will base themselves for the season relaunch. And Dragons coach Paul McGregor admits his days are numbered after their horror start to the year. Paul McGregor says he will not quit as Dragons coach but understands if he's given his marching orders after their 22-2 loss to the Bulldogs. And I understand the situation and, and this conversation around it every day, which doesn't help your team, doesn't help your players, doesn't help the club, doesn't help the fans or the sponsors. So, you know, if that decision's made, I'll wear it. It's been 81 days since the Dragons have scored a try. They're the only winless team in the NRL in 2020. The West Coast Eagles have touched down on the Gold Coast where they will base themselves for the season restart. Players will stay at Royal Pines for at least the next month and will be joined later today by Frio. The Crows and Port Adelaide won't leave for the Gold Coast hub until Friday week. They'll open their 2020 campaign on Saturday in Adelaide. It's important to start switching, switching your head into game mode as quickly as possible. We had a really solid hit out, which was probably the perfect prep for a showdown. Collingwood and Richmond restart the season on Thursday night. Seven News can reveal the world heavyweight title could be decided in Brisbane with Suncourt Stadium part of the negotiations to host the mega fight between superstars Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. If the crowds are back and they're not overseas, well, why wouldn't you have it here? And could it be Suncorp? Well, we've, had a, we've got a great relationship with Suncorp Stadium. It's probably the, one of the best football stadiums in the world. I think it's one of the great boxing venues of the world when it's full. So could it be done here? 100% yes. The bout would be the third title fight between the heavyweights and would be held on Boxing Day. A Queen's birthday tradition at the MCG has been reimagined for Neil Danaher's fight against motor neurone disease. This year, some of the biggest names in footy found creative ways to take on the big freeze challenge. Neil Danaher had to watch from his home this year. <laughs> the big freeze interrupted, but thankfully not cancelled by the pandemic. As we say, the day must go on. The clubs made their own versions of the freeze, from pools and baths, tiny slides to giant ones. Bloody cold, but it's for a good cause and I'm happy. At the Eagles, where Neil Danaher was head of football operations for five years, Brad Shepherd was launched into the pool by Captain Luke Shuey. Just let me get my plums out of the fruit. <laughs> While Michael Walters went in with some help from Nat Fife as his favourite player from the 90s, Geelong's Peter Riccardi. Now, for the big reveal, who are you? I am. Riccardi has taken the mark inside the 50. It's the cross to Riccardi. Oh, brilliant. Another Riccardi on the 50 lines. And kicks a wonderful goal. The players' costumes included a royal visit. I've come as Prince Harry Tom. Um, so, obviously, Megsy. 
and uh, a little baby Archie here. And Bradley Hill wanted to be known as Dennis Rodman for his slide at the Saints. No, no, you won't, no. He's losing the battle, government. I beg thank you. Basil Zampolis, 7 News. Next on 7 Early News, a closer look at how the weather is shaping up in your part of the country. Taking a look at the weather around the country, onshore winds and an offshore trough are generating showers over coastal New South Wales and a few showers over eastern Queensland. High pressure is bringing mostly clear and calm conditions elsewhere, leading to a frosty night for many places in the south. So around the capitals today, a late shower for Brisbane, a top of 23 for you. Sydney, 18 and a possible shower today. Canberra, 13, mostly cloudy. A foggy start in Melbourne, then 15 and sunny. Hobart, 14 and mostly sunny. Adelaide frosty, then sunny, a top of 14. Perth 25, nice day today, mostly sunny for you and a mostly sunny day for Darwin and 33. That's Seven's early news for this Tuesday, the 9th of June. I'm Natalie Barr. Now it's time for Sunrise with